to me but I know that the chair has to change so um, that's one suggestion that we'd like to have brought forward some of the things that we um, we do uh, in the field of education we do a uh, March gladness where we do uh, educational programs on Sunday afternoons in March when there's nothing else to do we try to do a snowshoe this year we got mud shoed and hit it cancel it because we couldn't actually get to the site. It was so bad with the mud. But uh, we, we try to get folks on the land at least once in a year. Um, other education programs, we've done, of course, a series of videos um, over the years. 20 years, you got lots of time to have done some of these things. Our most recent one was we um, decided we should be addressing the housing crunch for bats. So we have a three minute bat video on why bats should have houses and how you can make them. And hopefully we'll solve the bat housing crunch. Do we have too many bats and not enough houses or? <laughs> well, the more houses we have, the more bats we'll get, but we really need to get as many bats as we can because the, bat, the bats do a job on the mosquitoes. Mm -hmm. And well, especially, Mark better be paying taxes on his bat house. <laughs> uh, they used to be coming out of the mine shaft quite a bit. Yeah. And I think white animals wiped them out. They, oh, yeah. They had a, a terrible when that happened because up at Carly Coolidge's house, they were, yeah, they were landing on our screens all over the place up there. It was a mess. I remember my place too. So, yeah. Yeah. And so are you thinking that bats are actually coming back? Yes. Yeah. And we've seen them, the, the, the bat house at, down at the Arboretum, um, we've seen them usually at dusk is when we see them. You know, I'm sure they're there at other times, but, and with, with help from the, the Conservation Commission um, construction crew, uh, we've come up with a post for the bat houses that instead of having bat houses here and here on two ends, it's, it's like a slingshot <laughs> and the bat house goes up and the, we can pull it down to clean it out. It works great. So we have um, installed two of those at the Arboretum with bat houses and one at, at the Westcomb lot where we've had a bat house for a while. So it seems to be a successful project. Another area that as we look at what we do with land and how it all works. Um, we've asked Mike Green, who is a consulting forester now, but was a state lands forester, uh, to look at the Goma parcel to see if there was, a, if there would be a possibility of doing a logging operation. Um, that of course is an opportunity to bring in money for the community if, if in fact, is enough growth up there. It's been a number of years since it was logged. Um, so he's looking at it. We haven't been pushing them too hard, but but um, we think it'd be an important thing to get, at least get an idea of what it would be worth and what it would take and how we could do it. Um, because the, the other item about the land that I know you've all heard me talk about, I, ecologically informed management plans on the land so that we would really know what, what was best 
for the parcels. Um, Lois, can I um, ask? Sure. With what did you say the fellows Mike Mike, Mike Green Green Mike Green. Okay. I don't I don't know if this is something the rest of the board would like to have looked at, but as you know, the, as Conservation Commission knows, the Prindle lot has been and you supported the idea of it being set aside as deer yard area for the um, industrial, industrial park. Okay. Um, I don't think that precludes the possibility of some limited logging in there. Maybe no <laughs> knows. <laughs> yeah, um, but that I guess that would be my my question. I know there's some really mature hemlocks in there that are not going to get any better uh, as they get older. Well, some of that was logged, wasn't it, for the uh, powerhouse bridge? A relatively small portion of it, is my understanding, was logged, and it was primarily timbers that they that they saw it out for that. I think I think your uncle was involved in that process. Yeah. That must be eons ago. Well, it was whenever the powerhouse bridge went down. It was two thousand and one, so it's twenty something years ago. Um, but anyway, just just a thought. But, um, right. As what? to you know, and again, I'm not sure what the ramifications are. With well, we to, we, to we have some expertise on our, on yes. our conservation commission, and it's a real help. Yeah. And so, but we certainly could ask Mike to take a look at it too, as well as as our own crew. Yeah, I mean, obviously, it would be very selective. Um, yeah. Cutting if it if it's even feasible or possible with it, I don't know, but I thought it's sort of. Yeah. Yeah, like some lots aren't, aren't going to get better as they get older. Do Do you work with the village also, the conservation commission? I mean, we have that hundred and eighty-five acres. Hundred and eighty-five acres of the is the conservation commission. Involved? Are you talking about the talc mill property? Yeah, yes. yeah. We've always just um, been a part of that. We haven't done anything in recent years, but um, back. I can't, well, I can't remember just when, but. We had um, uh, lands students that did projects on all our lands, mm -hmm. and um, we had already done an in a tree inventory. So we have that. It's on, these things are all on file somewhere here. How long ago was that? Well, the, that was um, when we first started. It was back Let's in pick a decade. Well, the, <laughs> between two thousand five and two thousand ten. Okay. okay. It was early. It was one of the first ones that we did the. We did that. We um, also, when the students were here, they laid out some um, educational opportunities and places where trails might go. And so there's these little publications on that, but we haven't followed up on them because the the old mine is still there. And so you know, they, it was nice things that you could tap into and say this would be interesting for students down the road. So there's possibilities, but yeah. Well, the mine was there first before they moved up on the hill. Yeah. yeah. So the oh, one of the other things we do is we we fix up what gets broken along the way, and um, for this year, for instance, working with Jason and the town crew, we were able to um, patch up the Beard Recreation Park accessible trail got washed out at one section at the top so that you, you couldn't put a wheelchair on it. And um, so they came out, they did a great job. They got that all fixed. And the Conservation Commission members have been working on trying to reroute where the water might run when it comes because it's just the way it is. You know, you can't control the water and once it gets going, things get washed out. But so we appreciate the the crew helping with that is one project. And another project that we had was the Vermont River Conservancy, <coughs> who of course conserved Journey's End and gave it to the town. They offered to come in and do some trail maintenance building, and that's in the report, uh, building the, uh, the bridge and the punchins and... Sorry, And Lois. the lights out. <laughs> Meeting adjourned. <laughs>
<laughs> is there a way to bypass that so they yeah. just stay on? I think you have to hit it, hold it down or hold something, it and then it seconds. stays. Sorry about the interruption, Lois. No, that's okay. Do any other board members have further questions for the Conservation Commission? I do believe that we all appreciate your hard work as well. Yes, we do. All of our committees are very hardworking and always looking for more, right? I was just going to ask, yep. Lois, um, has the committee discussed anything uh, about potential uses for future properties that may come into the town's ownership along the river? Um, we we haven't had um, any uh, formal discussions because it's all new, but we we're all quite interested in pollinator gardens and um, trees, planting trees, um, using the land for the environment as best we can. And we'll certainly be looking to do anything we can do to help in that regard. So, but one of the other things that the, the select board along the way approved was our land management plan forms that um, asks, what's the matter? Tom, do you? I wondered about that. You know, the, the flood came and I don't know whatever happened to all the paperwork that we had down in the office. Our office for the Conservation Commission since 2005 has been the bo one bottom drawer in a file cabinet in the office downstairs. Mm. That's where we stored our stuff. I don't know where other town administrators in that stored it, but the <laughs> this this land management review form was designed to, to help us help groups as they're starting to plan something on a parcel of land, whatever it is. Um, we work with Casey um, uh, a couple of times now with things, um, just because we have a lot of expertise that can, can save somebody from making some kind of mistake. So the way we had it set, we have it set up is that if somebody comes in, Tom, and and says that they'd like to um, build a trail on the Prindle property, um, you would ask them to talk to the Conservation Commission first, hand them one of these forms. We're not doing anything to slow anything down or stop it. We just wanna help people. So I probably should come back in and talk to you because I think that might have fallen through the cracks in, in all our floods. <clears throat> and not everybody was on the select board when that was approved, but it was approved. Okay. okay. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank Lois. you, Lois. Yeah. Who would the board like to hear from next? Who have we not heard from? Uh, beautification. It's the end of summer, but summer is their busy time. So it might be good. Historical Society, Planning Commission, Rail Trail Committee. If I'm forgetting one, I apologize. Many good options. Maybe beautification and rail trail to end out the summer. Rest of the board, good with that? You okay with that, Adrian? And who's the chair of Rail Trail? Doug, you okay with that? Just nod your head. <laughs> uh, the, the question, Doug, was whether the Rail Trail Committee and Beautification would present at our next meeting. Or not next meeting, sorry, it's the September. First meeting of the month. Second, second meeting second of the month. It's right around a month from now. Okay. Sounds good. Tommy, send the questionnaire to him. All right. Rosemary, you have the floor. Would you like to do the liquor license first and get it out of the way? First class and third class for. Did we pull 
Operations LLC. And they are the um, Is this a special event license or a regular? Regular yearly license. But they're adding they the third class. serve beer at the college? <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> they're, they're looking to serve hard liquor too. Yeah, beer and Usually they don't get licenses for it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> What would the board like to do with the liquor license application? Move to approve. Second. Motion and second. Further discussion? With a standard letter. Yeah. Sounds amendable. Fine by me. All right. Sending the standard letter. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Bring in some more students. <laughs> <laughs> Beer in the end. Well, hard liquor in the end. Right. <laughs> I believe this is the year end report that's going out. That's the uh, status report. And here's the year end reports. Two pages. It's not a final year end, but it's beautiful. How much it's more is needed? Okay. Two pages. Two board. I will look at again and recreation. But this is probably pretty close. So maybe at the next meeting, it's two pages, Mark. I, I was trying to make life easier oh, on you. Such a good so are you thinking at the next meeting we'll be able to allocate surplus after those numbers are? Right now I have 254000 and somewhere else to be able to Select board raises? It wasn't done. At town Nobody meeting. laughed at that one. It wasn't done at town meeting. So that's what I'm I know. <laughs> really? <laughs> that's that's intentional. We were talking select board raises. <laughs> I thought you said races. <laughs> yeah. It could be the light light of light the Didn't they vote themselves double pay or something? So our total revenue is. 125%. Total expenditure is at 95.3%. Very close to less than black chicken. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Odd. Um, do board members have questions about any specific <clears throat> item? Could we perhaps for our next meeting? So the, the page two of your cash, 24 cash on hand mm -hmm. report, these are the last year's resolutions. This is what was in the town report this year's town report. This year's. Mm -hmm. Okay. We have okay. cash runs these. Well. What? Oh, yeah. So even if we do all of those, we potentially will still have 254, 485. Yeah. 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 Depending on adjustments that you might, might make. Yeah. Okay, well that's... So these are... Really uh, <clears throat> these fund balances are as of July 1. Is that here? Uh, on your yes. So they don't necessarily include any like the reappraisal fund that will the ninety seven seven sixty four will it will have twenty thousand added to it. Mm -hmm. Well, I, we have to allocate that. Yeah. That's that's will be part of what we need to do to yes as an action item. Yeah, like you see the grant match fund is very low. I'm surprised the emergency fund is. That's what one thing I want to ask. But right now we're about fifty thousand dollars overspent in fund. 
that stop the cancer in the human mother? That just for Facebook and Do you want any of that to 69,000 to come? It could be down around that 69,000 or legal I, it, that's a question for the board, um, but if everything's accurate, we're looking at 254000 in excess of what we were expecting. I, all things considered, I'm very happy. Um, yeah, I think we should leave the emergency fund alone because we're going to need it. We're going to get something in Right. Okay. What's the... Yeah. We got two people saying leave it alone. I agree. Yeah, I believe the consensus of the board is to leave it. Do you need a motion for that? I don't. Um, in the library, we have a few um, items in there, line items for capital and maintenance on the building. Which they kind of wanted to do until this year's to have the final, take the final place. Do um, you want to reserve that out or do you want to? I believe, didn't we already make that motion in a meeting for the library? To, to allow the reservation of those, whatever their funds were in this year's budget to roll it over into. That was that was the motion because I specifically remember asking the question like we don't have a reserve fund and it came up. This has been done with I think we compared it to paving. Yeah, put, put, it, in the put it into this reserve um, reserves that are in cash. Yeah, yeah I'm gonna add that to one I'm sure Casey will want to discuss the items of that meeting. You'll see the half pipe buildings in there. So, yes. Forty one dollars. Yeah, part of money. It's this one. Yeah, just want to move from there. Yes, if we reserve it out, that's what we propose. That's yes. in this. Yeah. Um. Do you want it? Do you want Casey to report on the items in blue? I missed a little bit there. Um, she'll want to be that discussion. Oh, we're gonna have this discussion at the next meeting after you get a chance to look over everything else. This the half pipe bill came in, and that was forty one thousand eight hundred dollars. So technically, she has enough money to have a problem with it. That's good, Bill. Very good. Yeah, good. Very good. Very good. Very good. Any further questions from the board? I'm waiting for the ball. I'm waiting for the ball to drop. I was trying to cut her off before we got the bad news. I'm not sure who's going to be doing the grants on the rail trail to bring people downtown or the Legion Field, the playground grant. Um, Dean has been doing that. I believe he's got the equipment board. Are there deadlines on these, Rosemary? Not that I'm aware. Do you know, Tom? On the users or man we need to use those funds? I don't believe so. We, I think we've already received those. Yeah. yeah, I just sometimes they come and you gotta you gotta use them. BCF funds are excellent. Like once they've been established, they'll, they'll usually do annual updates or buy annual updates, but they don't I've never seen that in the past. We already have it's not like a reimbursement from the state where you have no to I understand that. that. I just, you get these grants with an intention and Kind of want to follow their intention. Yeah. Well, and at the very least, I know that the rail trail committee will be discussing a potential use of the money dedicated to rail trail purposes. So uh, perhaps we can hear about that at our September meeting. Perhaps. Perhaps. 
Stay tuned. Both. I mean, the twenty is what interests. The twenty, yeah. Could these? Uh, can I get these in email format? Yeah. By chance. And then. Is a PDF file? Yeah, PDF. Yeah. PDF file. I don't have any further questions. It sounds like we'll be able to allocate surplus next meeting. If there's no other questions for the board. I believe you're free to go if you want, Rosemary. Thank you for coming to our second meeting. You're more than welcome to stay. No. <laughs> I'm honored to stay. Um, Randall. I want, I want you to go home and enjoy it. So. <laughs> Randall did provide a report to the board. Yeah. Um, there was no seeking of action in the report, uh, but do board members have any questions? We could have Tom follow up with Randall if, if need be on anything, or uh, Duncan does coordinate with him a lot. He is. I was trying yeah. to watch. I didn't see him. Was he on there? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I did just want to say about the Vermont Community Foundation funds. I did have a conversation a while back with Holly Morehouse, specifically regarding the money that had been allocated for essentially the recreation piece, because uh, I, I let her know that there was a transition in that position in 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 process, and so it did flag for her just a little bit of a concern that, you know, the project that had, but had been identified was um, a project that had been identified by the previous recreation coordinator. And so uh, she was just wanting to know what the status was. And, you know, I, I haven't had specific conversations, uh, but I know that it was reflected in the minutes that the intention was to see that through. But if, if that is not the case, then the Vermont Community Foundation would like to be notified of that just so that they can reallocate if 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 necessary to some other higher priority project in the town. So I, I don't know who can specifically address that. I don't know if that's a board thing, if that's the new recreation person, or if it's just a wait and see kind of conversation down the road, but it's just to put it on your radar that it is it has been flagged um just you know wanting to make sure that it was going to happen as described and if not you know they're open to just reallocating it to some other priority if that's the if that's the desire of the new person in collaboration with the board or whatnot what were you saying rosemary I believe the stuff has been ordered in october that um time. did you hear uh rosemary randall uh i think i heard she said that the, some of the material has been ordered Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. Great. I'll let I'll let Holly know that. That's the twenty five thousand playground grant. Okay. Yeah, I'll let I'll let her know. And then, as far as the report, if the board doesn't have questions, I I mean, there are just a few tiny little updates regarding. I had mentioned that we had well, not we, but that VEM had received notice of an RFI. I, I didn't precisely word it. I said they'd received an RFI. They received notice of an RFI. The RFI has now come with all the questions regarding the SWIFT current application. And uh, the, the timeline for responses by essentially by the end of August, um, or excuse me, the middle of September, but VEM, because they have to do their own sort of separate review, because they're the VEM is the entity that's sort of the interface between the applicants, i.e. us and Pomerlo and FEMA. And so they've just set a sort of earlier deadline so that they can have time to address it, get all their questions answered before then they forward it on to FEMA. But FEMA has sent those questions. There's not really anything for the town side of that application to address. It's mostly, as, as I mentioned, what was expected, which is a whole host of uh, engineering questions. So it's really for the Pomerlo and their engineering team to kind of address all of the questions that FEMA's design folks have for them in terms of the construction of the wall, et cetera. So, and then I had made mention that there had been 
some preliminary conversations sort of as a result of the initial VCRD meeting, just in terms of who was present. Uh, the first of those conversations happened. Uh, I followed up and found out that actually this Friday, there's going to be another conversation that's happening uh, between the Preservation Trust and some of the stakeholders. And then there's going to be a broader conversation with multiple people. Right now, the Preservation Trust is kind of having individual meetings to identify interest and opportunities. And then there'll be a larger one uh, in, at which the, uh, uh, I assume I will be present uh, if that's the board's. Hey, Randall. Uh, yes. Randall, can you turn your video off? Yeah. You don't all right? You, you, uh, you face, is that horrible? Jumbled. Can you continue now? <laughs> yeah. No, no, it's uh, the internet speed in Vermont. You sound much more clear now. Yeah, no, that's no problem. Um, was it the part about the RFI or was it after that? It was after that. Yeah, uh, just that I had indicated that the preservation, the executive director of the preservation trust had kind of an, proposed the idea of a conversation to figure out a potential plan B for the relocation of the grocery store or the, or the uh, you know, the idea of bringing a grocery store to Johnson. And he followed through on that piece, as I mentioned in the report, but there's now a subsequent conversation that's been scheduled on Friday. And then after that conversation, I think there will be a broader conversation with more uh, stakeholders. And uh, as, again, assuming the board's desire that I would be attending that meeting to participate in those conversations. But the first two conversations are kind of preliminary conversations. Then they'll be get convening, I think, of a larger conversation. Um, I'm in support of you attending. Yeah. Um, I'm getting nods from the whole select board. Um, yeah. Certainly. I assume so. I just wanted to make sure uh, that that was the case. Um, and then yeah. again, are there questions about the report itself about uh, yes, I got one with regard to the request for information for VEM. Um, you indicated that most of the items look like they would need to be responded to by Pomelo and their engineering firm. Do any of those requests for information give you heartburn in terms of the viability of the application itself. I know that you had indicated that you had gotten some feedback from some of the state folks indicating that they were not altogether totally optimistic that that Swift Rudder, Swift Current grant would be approved. And that was the reason for having a plan B. But was there anything in the RFIs themselves that, that would lead you to believe that it's a dead horse? I don't know enough about the way that the federal inquiry process works to say definitively. I can say that they had a host of technical questions. And again, I don't have the expertise on a lot of those technical questions to know whether these are very easily addressed technical questions or whether these are, you know, huge, not, I don't want to say I gotcha, but, you know, huge uh, red flags. Um, as I, as I mentioned I don't know, at some previous meeting, you know, they're working with Dubois and King. Dubois and King has had a ton of work uh, with FEMA related projects and has a lot of expertise in that area. So um, I don't think that they're the sort of entity that would, um, you know, not have the ability to address technical questions since they, you know, they have a pretty established track record in working with those sorts of projects. Having said all that, you know, there's all kinds of potential behind the scenes problems with federal appropriations that could arise independent of the quality of the application, independent of the, you know, engineering questions. It could just simply be that, uh, you know, money doesn't get allocated in a timely fashion or who knows what could happen with those sorts of things. And I think, I think my read of the situation was that it's just, um, you know, which is true, right? It's it's always prudent to have parallel tracks and parallel efforts and to not be over overly reliant on one particular course of action. So that's sort yeah. of uh, that's sort of the path that we've been on is just to 
keep some other opportunity or potential opportunity out there to see what else could happen should this fall through. I think that's wise. Um, I don't know how the rest of the board feels about it, but if you have any contacts with Pomerlo or VEM that might be able to give us a little bit of feedback on the viability of the application, I think that would be really useful for us to know. In the community as a whole. Any feedback would be good. Yeah, it, it's the predominant issue in the community. Yeah, and like I said, you know, it's a complicated it's a complicated question because you know we want to be perceived or you know not even perceived we want to be good community partners for businesses intending to operate in Johnson, right? Like we want to make sure that we're doing what we can to have this private entity Pomerlo Real Estate be able to leverage its asset and to you know bring a grocery store to town and have them uh, have their property remain viable and profitable. At the same time. We have to balance that with the potential po exploring other possibilities for other avenues for having that that could include Parmelo or may not include Parmelo, et cetera, which is, again, just in my view, being a prudent manager of you know resources and not in any way saying that we've chosen one path over the other, you know, like I think we're doing our best to be good partners. We've applied for a federal grant on behalf of the Parmelo Real Estate Group. Um, but we, you know, we also have to explore other options just as, you know, concerned folks for the future of Johnson and the citizens of Johnson. And it's, but it's, you know, it's very important to keep that, keep that balance in mind and make sure that nobody's feeling like we're sort of putting our thumb on the scale for one outcome over the other, you know, just sort of pursuing whatever avenues seem viable and that there's community support for. Paul. Thanks. I just wanted to ask Randall, um, is form based code and the considerations therein being considered as these plans go forward? Did you hear that, Randall? Yeah, I mean, I'm aware of uh, the concern about form based code, and I am not up to speed completely on where things fell. I know that at one point there was a discussion at least amongst the select board itself about exploring the possibility of making exemptions for form based code based on for you know regarding flood mitigation efforts uh i don't know where that all landed between the planning commission and the select board whether such an exemption actually was uh in the works or had been rejected or had been contemplated um but if those things are in place i mean they're going to have to be adjudicated by someone they're going to have to be complied with whether there, you know, if there's not an exemption, then there's going to have to be that discussion. And if there is that, if the exemption is established for flood mitigation efforts, then that will, you know. Um, so all I can say is, just, yeah, I'm aware of the issue uh, and wherever the issue lands in terms of the town's will as either exemplified by the planning commission or the select board or, or a town vote, should it, should it come to that, uh, you know, it, 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 it will be part of the plan. I do believe that we, do we ever communicate that with the planning commission? I believe we asked the planning commission to work on it. It's not committed. It was a discussion with the planning commission. Uh, after the town meeting, we brought that up and the planning commission voted not to recommend to the select board that the media was granted the sole reason that be developing in the same place, making it easier, just doesn't seem no longer the best idea. So that's that was our recommendation. Was, was that ever formally communicated to, to us as a board? Just barely. Uh, well, that came to me in April and May. They, they responded really quick to the town meeting. Yeah, it was right after the town meeting. And I, I believe I think I was right, but it's only on the next time. It was in. It was at a select board meeting. That's how I found. I, I do remember that. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'd say that's an issue. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> well, I think at that time the process is still a variance process too. So any the DRB still has the authority to take a form of a non-compliant form-based code application and approve it. And, <laughs> No, they no, don't really. The, the variance process is very specific yeah. as to what they can grant a variance for. 
And I don't, I don't think you can just say we're going to waive the form based government requirements for. So I, think, I think this yeah. probably needs to be uh, on the list to address at a work session meeting. If I could jump in, I think it should be, and it also was the process. I'm oh, sorry, what was the? The subject should be on your list, but then also what's the process to properly sign on it? What is that process to do that? I I had some conversation about this. I again I don't uh, I don't know municipal law in Vermont as as well as maybe some other folks in the room. I believe though that uh, if there is a conflict between the select board and the planning commission on this issue, I believe that a citizen petition can uh, create a vote, a, a town wide vote on the matter. And it can be taken essentially out of the hands of both the select board and the planning commission, and there can be a vote on it. I, I, that seems to be what I recall in a conversation with LCPC. I don't know that with certainty, but I, I think that should be part of the discussion as to that could be a piece of this that's sort of out of both entities' hands. But I'm not 100% certain on that. But I can follow up, or you can have someone else follow up to see if that's one of the potential avenues. Can I ask a clarifying question? Sure. So was your was your discussion of an exemption, was that kind of a broad exemption of all flood mitigation projects or was it adding flood mitigation to a potential reason for a variance? And I guess in your mind, is there a difference between those two? Okay. The discussion was to give the uh, Planning administrator or the development review board latitude to grant an exemption to the requirements specifically for classification purposes. So, this would not be a DRB variance process. This is saying whoever would be able to designate certain projects as exempt from form based code. I have to go back and look at this to say exactly what the wording was, but I believe that's correct. Right? First of all, variances. Are set by state statute, so we don't get to change what the variance is. Second, the process that Paul was outlining grant flood mitigation variances, first of all, it's a non starter. Second of all, it would have to go, I believe, before the development review board. You couldn't just, they, the builder would have to apply. Someone would have to apply for a variance and then it would be adjudicated by the government. It would be denied and then pushed to the development board. Yeah, yes, but not the exemption for flood mitigation, which is not allowable under the statute. Chairman, is or is not that building out of compliance with form based code right now? By changing the windows yeah. and the siding, right? By covering the window with the post office. And they also, over the years, have done other renovation work, which I don't believe they were done. Permits. permits would have been granted for the work they've done, but they've never applied. So they've just ignored one of those permits. Chris, the plywood uh, was, I, I did look at it. It felt like a temporary measure with long term renovation plan waiting on the swift current grant that we're discussing now. So it felt unburdensome to have them fill out two permits for one construction process, whereas it's going to be required to fill out permits for the final construction. They've never filled out permits for anything, any of the work they've done. Corey, you could not find it in the answer. No, no. So, yeah. You know, they just ignored it. Do you think there was anything done? I, I can tell you that there was no permit application for anybody to fill out because Tosh predecessor didn't have an application for it. Brian drafted one. Huh? Brian's story drafted one. Well, uh, if he did, he didn't make anybody fill it out. I drafted it to say it didn't exist. It's not true. It existed, but. 
I mean, in the so the first form based code permit came in like my first week here, and I think we've only had three total. You said two. Yeah, there's one that I think I told you about uh, at garage that I, I don't have to pick a copy and file, so I don't have a ton of it. But regardless, you, the code doesn't say that it has to be a permit form. The code says you have to apply for the permit. It's outlined what a permit what's required is in the code. So you just answer those questions and you can get a permit. But, but do you think, I'm trying to think of what improvements were made at the store property after the adoption of form based code that would have required a permit. They rebuilt the entrance to the uh, post office. And that was permanent. They so used steel and they made structural changes. They would have gotten approved, but they never applied for a permit. In that Not in I think of form based code, except they didn't obtain. I permit. think if we're going to have a conversation on form based code, we need to allow more meeting time. I do hear your concerns. We are half an hour late and this is Randall's report. They're valid concerns. I just don't want to go back and forth on previous permits of form based code. We yeah. can totally set up meeting time to do it. I think and the it's issue on the list that we need to next. discuss though in a future board meeting is where where we go. If if the if the project gets approved, it's definitely gonna not meet the current, current form standards. based code. Yep. I think there should be some direction for planning commission to clarify was the planning commission aware that you were only granting the ability for a variance and not granting exemption? And would that change the planning commission's vote? And it doesn't have to be answered now, it's just that, that concept. Because it hurts the end of the And I think it's also important to understand that it, we might be talking about buildings other than the grocery store mm -hmm. that would need, need those kinds of waivers or special considerations. Yeah. Potentially, yep. Yeah. I mean, Permits were done without permits. That there was no permit, there was no uh, like poster, if you will, like a zoning fee, and there was no application. And I received advice that we should select board should make a formal motion at some point to say all per, all work prior to X date shall be exempt and held harmless. Uh, so it's on file for any properties because it could be considered. And look at. Uh, the word is that it gets their title not during that time in which it was adopted and which the permit process started. Yeah, failure to obtain a permit constitutes a defect in title. Thank you. That's that's what we have. <clears throat> Amnesty. Yeah, so <laughs> and to have an official like retroactive <laughs> seems like enforcement's the big issue on that one. <laughs> Uh, Randall, thank you very much for your time. I know that curveballed a little bit. Um, are you all set or did you have any last words? That's so ominous. I need last words. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, thank you. Thank you for your for time. For tonight only. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, Randall. Uh, next item is reappraisals. Um, there is a write up on this in the packet. Uh, the board can decide to do whatever they would like. Um, I am personally interested in seeing the proposals. Um, there is a recommendation to go with NEMREC and good reasoning behind it, but I don't see how we can actually approve a price not knowing what it is. I agree. The rest of the board's thoughts? So it's 2029. No, right now it's 2024. I know, but that's when they would start the report. Is that, is that when they would start or when it would be completed? Both. They, don't they do the property searches for like a year or two and then compile everything on the third year? I think with a town-wide reappraisal that they would be, it's a good question for Justin. Yeah. But I'm thinking it would all be done in in See, one calendar year. Okay. Yeah. Well, you are waiting for three years. It used to be you had three years to complete your reappraisal after notice. They must have played that before putting five years out. I think they had to because yeah. there's nobody yeah. out no there option. doing reappraisals. So um, could you reach out to Justin and get them 
the quotes yeah, um, and the RFP responses. We definitely can't let this one go by the wayside. I just no. I think we should nail them down relatively soon. But I agree. Having knowing what the cost is going to be is kind of important. Yeah. Keep it on nine sixteen if we have to boot. We have to boot. Oh, nine sixteen would be fine. It's nine nine. That's going to hurt. Yeah. Yeah. Nine nine. That's going to be tight. And a, you know, I, a, a normal option would be to go back out with the RFP, but I don't think we're going to get any other responses. I don't there's, think there's other firms there's out there. Basically, nobody else out there doing it. When you're booking out for five years, business is going to be pretty good, right? <laughs> Okay, uh, I do believe we're done with that. Uh, Duncan, I believe you had a update on the town sewer water connection. Yeah, um, it's gonna be very brief. Um, Paul and I have coordinated a couple of times with emails. Um, Tom has given me a copy of the current ordinance in word format. So given um, the ideas that Tom and I have talked about, I was gonna take a first stab at <clears throat> amending the ordinance. Um, so it's a, I would describe it as a work in progress and we'll record it another sometime so. Okay. Does that sound reasonable? Good question, we have asked an acreage or number of houses that would be included by the partially included Properties. I I don't, but we've recently made contact with the Lamont County Planning Commission, who did the the original map. So I'm hoping that they might be able to give us some ideas of acreages of properties that we might be opening it up to. Yeah. 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 Well, good, Paul. All right. Next item. Uh, is with regard to the ATV ordinance. Uh, in a previous meeting, we had heard concerns and requests. Um, and I guess, how's the board want to deal with it? Do they want to delegate a board member or two to work on revisions and come back the same way we're dealing with all other ordinances? Um, what are the board's wishes? So, Mr. Chairman, are you going to look for uh, a motion uh, of these three things that are listed? Do you want a motion to amend, remove, or leave the ordinance the way it is? Uh, just direction on what the board would like. We would agree to make an amendment, and we could deal with it on bringing it up at every meeting, or we could deal with it the way we're dealing with all other ordinances and delegate a board member. We just talked about an ordinance amendment that had been delegated to a board member to come back for a vote. I'm on record as having said that I would like to leave the ordinance alone. Um, I realized the you know the vote was uh, to to open it up and look at it. But I'll just throw that out there. But I was previously on record of leaving it alone. We've got too many other things to think about right now, in my opinion. That's one board member. I would just assume leave it as is as well, um, and you know just for. Disclosure, we got a lot of emails about this issue. Um, one email that I thought was particularly helpful was Paul's email that included some information from the survey the Planning Commission did a couple of years ago, uh, where most people in town are okay with things as they are as far as ATVs. We also have the vote that happened a couple of years ago that kind of you know clarifies that as well. So I don't I don't see why we need to change it. But. Full disclosure, there were emails against uh, the ATV ordinance. And there were several that have come in that are in favor of the ordinance that I haven't forwarded to the board. So I don't know the exact numbers, but relatively equal in support of the amendment to connect both sides of town. But I'm in favor of doing what we said we were gonna do. Okay. Well. I'm going to move uh, that we start the process of amending the ATV ordinance to make the previous test areas permanent. 
You're the only one that hasn't spoken. I'm I'm peaceful with the way it sits right now, so I'm not seconding that. There is a motion on the floor. Is there a second? A third. Hearing none, the motion dies. Do you have another motion that you would like to make, Mike? No, that answer is right there. We did agree to connect the other side of the town at a previous meeting. Um, but I guess. Sentiment. I don't think we agreed to connect. I think we agreed to open the ordinance back up to consider. But I don't. I don't think we made any promises to to open up. That's my recollection. Also, we yeah. agreed to look at the ordinance. I don't know that we agreed to open up Railroad Street. That's everybody's recollection is different. But well, I guess we could the board. we could uh, check out the minutes and we could check out the video. Yep, we certainly could. But this motion died. It did. So what does that yes, mean? Margo. So what, so what does that mean? Most it means it, it, the, it, it means the present time. What you answer the current ordinance that has been in effect since two thousand. Wow, I was really young. Uh, is still in effect. It would have been either way. Um, I don't think we can remove an ordinance in one meeting. No. So, you know, the existing ordinance is still everything that was there is still there. Okay. But we can reserve the right if we do uh, check out the minutes of the previous meeting. And if it did say that we agree, then we can bring it back for further discussion. Okay. Further questions or comments? Tractor parade. Yes. Move to approve. All right. Motion on the floor to approve tractor parade permit. Second. Motion a second for the discussion. Uh, I have one piece. Uh, I don't. Does Tom call the sheriff's department or does the town have any? That's a Tom Carney or Tom Gallagher. Tom Carney. I'm not sure who organized. I that. think I think the town has to do it. Okay. So All right. There's a motion and a second. I gave the further discussion. Is there any further? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Guys have it. I have a conflict of interest. My tractor is spinning next for you. Really? Well, Mike said he was taking one in it. Yeah. Is it is My it tractor. still in there? Yeah. Are you going in it? I don't know. I might, I, I, if I'm around, I might. If we could get the whole slide. My tractor. You know, that would be I have four tractors, so I can put three other people. Shane, you're good to go. Drive one. You might come back. Yeah. Is this is this why you're still in? Yeah, this is insane. I think we have to communicate with AOT too, right? So uh, I'll start with them. And September 12th or something? I don't think it's their line. September 7th. September 7th. For the fire department. Yeah. Because we only need a little tiny perfect. section closed yeah. off between railroad and school street, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's all. It, and it's pretty quick. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, town logo. There's a brief write up, and I believe Adrian is here. She is. Very good pizza making, too. <laughs> the first pizza over last week. Are these different than the ones that we had from before? These are digit, digitalized versions of the sketches. They were from hand before. sketched before. It was More work. What'd you say? There were three in the back of it. There were six. Yeah, I had each person circle two options, I think. You didn't, you didn't like the one with the log in it? I probably did like the one with the log. Well, there was only one vote for that one, I think. Well, yeah, that would have been uh, that's democracy. <laughs> Yeah. I'm, I'm used to losing. <laughs> and the, the other option was um, on. Uh, there was a there was a reason I think that the current logo was not yeah acceptable for some reason. Uh, it could have to do with. I think it's acceptable. It's just there's a want for a new one. 
Wasn't, Am I wrong? wasn't there some reason that um i don't know much about the old logo um there might be it might not be in a format that's easy to put on documents i think that was yeah I think that was, yeah there was mention of it being round for social media and for like profile pictures and things so round or oval was a better thing mm -hmm. So are you hoping are you hoping for the select board to pick favorites of digitized ones? Um yeah, that was my thought. Tom, did you have a different are we trying to narrow it down for a um I think we're at that point. I mean well I'm wondering if we narrow it down for a town meeting day pamphlet that is not a formal vote or a survey. Is that a I don't know how you would count that. Rosemary, Rosemary would like to be in uh, counting those folks. Yeah, really. That would be the best election ever, actually. But well, I think we should just the top one is the cleanest one of the bunch. There's the question for the board: Do we want to just pick one and move on, or do we want to? Pick one and move on. I don't think we pick one and move on. We pick one and we use it as the basis of a full rebrand and you know marketing. But anyway, we don't we don't have we don't have marketing money. I I, I like the top one. Um, yeah, top and the bottom were going to be my favorites, but I think the top one. You're great. looking at the. Are you making a motion at the third page? I will make a motion. Sorry. Yes, that we adopt uh, the top one on this page of three. By, uh, by the top if one, anyone in the one. crowd would like to see it, I'll, I can pass my packet around. Sure. Dark <laughs> mountains. Yes, <laughs> you can also use the one on your test page. You put okay. You put the top one on that. So there's there's a motion in a second. I'll <laughs> ask for further discussion when. Shane sits back down. What's the difference? We can see them all. Hang on. <laughs> Only one we have to stand. Um, I don't know. That's a good question. What was your question, Mark? The different one of them says we're established in 1792, and the other says we're chartered in 1792. I think chartered is used more frequently for like towns, and established might be more. But we don't have an official charter. We? I'm not an oh, artist, so I can't. Rosemary just said no. Official charter. Where are we pulling out? Well, yeah. hang on here. We're in further discussion. Doug had a question. No, I don't have a, I don't have a question. I think it would be a really good start for the Ashley Johnson to have a logo ready and available for them to start with. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> so you're, you're suggesting we should. Pick one and move on. Oh, yeah. They pick. There's a motion and a second for the first one. Yeah. Right, Donna. I'm not crazy. Yeah, I didn't That's right. Pick second, did Mike, Mike did second before Shane even said it. Yeah. I was, no, I, I seconded as he was saying. Uh, <laughs> I could have changed the motion to something crazy midway. And, you could have. You, you weren't going to do that. Charles, <laughs> do you have a comment? Uh, the definition is the United States oh. Charter City is a city in which the governing system is defined by the city's own charter document that's, rather than solely by general law. That's okay. the village, not the town. The village. Exactly. Yeah. I do have one comment that Mark mentioned. Can we change the ESTD to EST? Yes, that's what I was going to say as well. EST with a period. I know that's so sticklery, but no, no that's, that's absolutely not I, I told you you pointed it out. <laughs> yeah, I know you gave me credit. It sounded like a disease of some kind. That's... So you're amending your motion saying to well, change the you would have to amend it and he would have to accept it. I am yes. doing I am doing whatever it takes to have that. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Motion and a second amended and seconded. Is there any further discussion? Thank you, Adrian, for your volunteer work. Sure. On this. Yeah. It Thank you very much. Cannot be stated enough how awesome that is. Yeah. Cool. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All um, those opposed. What did you say? I, I'm. I'm with. I'm with the crew. I'm on <laughs> that. That's good enough. It's not my favorite. But that's not your favorite. Number one. <laughs> Nobody Absolutely. opposed. He wanted the, the love. Eyes one. Have it. I wanted. <laughs> 
I wanted the lock, but I would have settled for the <laughs> Nobody opposed, Donna. Were you going to say something? Yeah, I right? um, I was just going to ask if you'd like me to move forward with doing like a brand style guide and showing like mock-ups of what future signage could look like with the logo and things like that to have as like a baseline to just refer to when something comes up. I would love that. Okay, cool. I am a lame duck. Be so. sure and... <laughs> Um, imagine it on a truck door. Truck door. Truck door. Mm -hmm. okay. So presumably we want to include that in our new website uh, detail. Mm -hmm. This is awesome. All right. And I I sent I designed like a potential home page of the web website um, that I included in that packet. Um, this was just based off of my own observations of what I've been hearing from people that uh, communication is really important from the reimagine event and so that's what my focus was when designing the home page was showing like upcoming events and um, latest notices and posts and uh, a way to sign up for alerts to stay connected to um, alerts that you guys want to put out if you came up with a system someday comment on that one um Push everybody to VT alerts. Mm -hmm. uh, if we have our own alert system, it's great for the 20 people that sign up for it, right? But, um, you know, if a tractor trailer full of diesel fuel crashes in the middle of town, VT alerts is where I'm going to post, mm -hmm. not here. And that goes, it's, it's a time thing. Well, yeah, so we post information from Forge Forum, but every time that there's a, a flood event, Beth adds a banner to our website. This is an extra layer that I don't foresee future emergency management no. heavily using because it adds layers. VT alerts, you can select geographic location you can select groups you can make groups to send everything to it mm -hmm. it's just a lot larger system already in place your test page is 100 percent better than it's a great test page <laughs> it's, it's i wasn't great. i wasn't trying to naysay I was no you're good, good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. are you replying to the rfp huh um what did you say okay Sounds good. Charles, did you have a question? I was just going to make a comment. We see alerts a lot of times. It takes about two or three hours to find. I know it's not a lot, so. But everything related to emergencies is going to go through VT alerts. Uh, there was lags, and I have complained about them uh, at the last event in early July. There's going to be snags with everything. Uh, if we put all of our cookies in in a local basket for issues. Oh, you could do both. Yeah, we could certainly do both. I I implore you to be right beside me the next time we have a large flood and and think about that. Okay. I uh, I'm not I'm not trying to be a negative person. I just of course you are. I'm coming across negative. I, I sort of like the idea of directing people to VT alerts, but having it like I don't know if it's possible for us to have an RS, RSS feed from VT alerts built into our website so that the newest VT alerts for our area just get blasted on there. Um, and so that there's a portal for people who just want to click a link and, and put in an alert because I know that that's part of VT alerts as well. But um, yeah, if we could link I, this, I don't think we need if to we build could our link, own. If we could link this to my BT Alerts account. <laughs> that would be handy. Just out of curiosity, do does anybody have any idea of how many email addresses we have for Johnson Citizens? Look at you, Rick. They all hold their information. No, I think real quick with this website, once contractors start coming in, right, there's going to be a supplemental provided of specific details to those who are, to those who are interested. And one of those is using uh, like contact capturing plugins, if you will. One of the like one I'm most familiar with is Mailchimp, right? So right. they go on the website once, they sign up, and they can get select board updates, emergency updates. They can get all the updates, or they can get just pizza of an update. But that's gonna like that's gonna be down the road, like getting in the weeds. And I think that that's gonna be a later conversation. 
working with the individual contractor and the select board to determine what what you guys want in the future. Mark, is your question: Is there a way to capture <clears throat> anybody that? Can I, I no, not is there a way? I'm sure there's a way to capture. You could probably go buy it. I mean, I suspect yeah. enough money will buy me everybody's email address and you know, we're really and we're rising to so one, Facebook page. Yeah. Yeah. You know, one front door phone service, you're going to capture 50. Two or three times you're going to have. I just think that it, um, it's, it's the past. Having people's emails is important. Right. More important than for an address. And More their TikTok important. accounts. Yeah. What are you going to do? Um, collect them. <laughs> yeah, sell them to third party providers. There you go. No. Make raise money. Uh, no, just have a way of communicating with people. Yeah. You know, and I'm not talking about weekly or monthly, but it would be I think every every board should have ways to contact their citizens. First thing we have to do is just boost up the website. I agree. And the extra step in the company. Charlie. So if you have this email address. That's now a public record. No. Yes. No. It's an opt-in. But if they have anything that they give is public record. And, and like the, the voter file can technically be requested by anybody and they can get that. Um, yep. It's it's not dissimilar. Thank you for pointing that out. Thank you, Adrian. Um, Very nice. Thank appreciate you. all your hard work. Kyle? Yeah, I just wanted to say that the work that you do saving accounts has tens of thousands of dollars. I mean, this is like a really incredible service that I just wanted to say. It's greatly appreciated. Okay, our next item is about a future vacant seat on the select board. I guess we need direction on where to go. I uh, people can interrupt me if they want. I believe there's three paths forward, potentially. One would be uh, holding a special election. Rosemary, do you know about what that would cost? It from between seven fifty and a thousand dollars. Okay. The other would be an appointment process. The other option is the seat could stay vacant until town meeting day. What does the board want to do direction wise so that we can appropriately plan? Appointment process. I'm in favor of leaving it vacant. Um, I would rather have this, you know, and I say that just because a special election is going to cost money and it's going to, when would we do it in October? Probably as early as we could do it. So the October, November. General election. Huh? We General could, election. Yeah, we could do it in November. Yeah. yeah. And then it would be even cheaper. And then we'd be in middle of budget. But uh, we don't have a vacancy yet. We do not have a vacancy yet. Um, we need a vacancy to start any of these, correct? Correct. But when the vacancy comes, What's the board want to do? I have an appointment. You're okay with the special with the um if we choose a special election, I'm okay with that. We could do it in November. Wouldn't be it wouldn't be a big when we appoint somebody that seems to be uh, open us up to favoritism. It Which just the, open open us up to favoritism. It does it seems like a no win situation to me. Candidates would have to do a petition for a special election. Yep. Get the name on file. Yeah. Can I bore everybody by reading the actual statute relative to filling a vacancy? You have no problem doing it any other time. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. I think I have to go to the bathroom. I do too. So the statute, it's it's fairly short and sweet. Duties of select board and special meeting. And this is under municipal and county government subchapter. Blah, blah, 33. Um, when a vacancy occurs in any town office, the select board forthwith by appointment in writing shall shall 
fill such vacancy until an election is held, except in the event of vacancies in a majority of the board. At the same time, such vacancies shall be filled by shall be filled by special town meeting called for that purpose. So, what I'm not entirely clear about, and I would suggest that we obtain an opinion from VLCT or whoever. Um, what does the select board forthwith by appointment in writing shall fail, shall fill such vacancy until the election is had? I, I was always under the impression, probably mistaken, that the board really had three choices. They could appoint, they could leave a vacant until the next election, or they could have a special election. Um, but that sounds like an that's what it sounds like to me. And I would think we should get a formal opinion on that before we. That's yeah. typical stuff from our food. It's clear as mud. Yeah. Actually, it's pretty clear. Shall. Well, it says forth with shall. Well, yeah. you, you mentioned you had to get a, a reading from Vermont Police to see the town. Yeah. So that tells you right there that it's. Uh, well, this is uh, the actual statute. Right. I'm, I'm suggesting that we do get a reading from the LCT. It shouldn't be that way. It should be black and white. And it shouldn't have to be that. Uh, there's a lot of shorts. Oh, I know. <laughs> so could well, we might as well be prepared. Anyway, we need another board member because if you can't have four, it's because you, there's no way to break the tie. So Duncan is asking if basically this could wait until a future meeting I'm upon yeah. legal opinion. And not legal, well, not legal. It's a decent town. BLCT. Yeah. Well, they do have right, but we don't have to pay yeah. for it. That's what I'm worried about. It is considered a very fine privilege because it comes from uh, aides and attorneys. As right. right, but it doesn't cost us anything. Well, does there are. Just our, our, our dues, yeah. Process, yeah. But it's not like we have to pay some attorney. We're already yeah, paying. But it is protected under. Can you? Yeah, because they have a legal department. Can you get that legal yeah. and uh, send it out so we can take it up in another meeting? Well, while well, Shane is still with us. That's right. First meeting. Be nine, nine. Take that one yes, Kyle. Can I or you ask Charlie why he's got his signs up all over town? I, I don't think that has anything to do with okay. what we're doing. Okay, well, that's what I was. Wondering. You are certainly welcome to ask Charlie offline anywhere where you run into him. I have his number if you need it. We might have his email someday. Okay. So, probably <laughs> Uh, role reclassification. I, I would just point out that the, the, the wording in the in the uh, posting does say appoint select board member vacancy, so that's a little it's a little confusing. I think the intent was to figure out what we were going to do and how we were going to do it, not not yeah, appoint some. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think people were thinking we we're going to appoint somebody to that. Yeah. Shane hasn't provided a resignation. Yeah, we have to so right. we, there's no vacancy. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Put us in quite a pickle here. Should have been a potential vacancy. Yeah. And potential future. I haven't forgotten the cake. That's, I, I did forget the cake, but now thank you for reminding me. I am owed a cake. <laughs> <laughs> retire. That. No, no, no. You owe us a cake. I I really because of the pleasure. The historic society could get you a pie. I'll we'll make a make a pecan. If Mark pays for it. Yeah, they, I knew you might bought plenty of them. That's what they tell us. Keep All right. Night Shane night. wants it rained back in. Road classification. Road reclassification. Uh, Paul's PowerPoint did not. I didn't get make the packet. You get it. But Paul did email us. So 
Sorry, could you say that again? So number 50 in the administrative report and the email to further clarify. I have your email. Um, it might just take me a second here. Can I ask Paul a question like Paul Meta? Sure. Well, one thing that I was unclear of from the PowerPoint is the, um, the recommendations of the planning commission for the sections of roads that met near the MRGP section. Whereas, and then is there any, just for bureaucratic reasons, sometimes it's often easier to reclassify entire lengths of roads or from the X mile marker point to the end of mile marker point, mile marker point. Did any of those sections fall within? So it'd be like class three, class four, class three. You know, how, how did that work out? Yeah, he has it. He has that written in his PowerPoint, which. <clears throat> Right. There is a process for road reclassification, I do believe. It certainly is. It's not a small one. Um, would the board like to take up all of the road reclassification recommendations from the Planning Commission? Just certain ones. Um, I think Town Highway 47 is the obvious choice if we're doing a portion. There's Hoag Road. You were recommending that uh, Prospect Rock Road be upgraded from a class four to a class three. Yeah, that's sort of a big ticket number. And, uh, and there's not a lot of, there's not a lot of landowners to notify. Yeah. Because I have you here, Paul, um, and this one's kicked around a lot. Town Highway 12, did the Planning Commission look at reclassifying that? Um, Town Highway 12 goes from Clay Hill at the Sharp Corner. It's a forest and it comes out on Plot Road across from who lives there now? Yeah, we, we could never find Molly Zapp lives there now. It's on the map. It doesn't, but we did look at it. We need to bring that up to a class four standard or reclassify it as a trail, right? There's a bunch of other ones you can look at. It's a class four. It is. Yep. Right. Yeah. I was able to connect with Jason on this. Jason has his own list. Um, the end of County Hollow and Water Hill. Uh, Town Highway 12, and uh, there's another one. I can't remember what bridge is out on a class four road. The end of Cotting Hollow is is uh, not meeting standard, but I don't. The Planning Commission wanted to leave that as a class four because it's a connecting road between towns. Am I right about that, Paul? Yes. Yeah. No yeah, reason why it couldn't be converted to a legal trail. Huh? There's no it. legal reason why every road couldn't be yeah, converted to a trail. Yeah, you can just can't just continue it without those towns. There's pretty much a trail now, so you're just on the pass. 
I think, yeah, and I think that's really since CMRPT in 2019, there's now a financial obligation to maintain these class four roads. And I, and I think that's that's the main concern, right? It's not only that we have to be connected, yeah, but now we have a financial obligation. I I don't think time wise that we could take all of these up in one shot. We part of the requirements are you need to notify every landowner on the road. So reclassifying Cotting Hollow means that everybody from the Sheep's Hole swimming hole to Waterville needs to be notified. Oh. Um, Huh? Oh, no, just reclassifying, like, whatever. You don't need to notify the landowners that are applying. Are you sure? I think so. Okay, maybe that's a little smaller look, I but we do need to have a down the road. But, I, you know, but we're, I think if you were going to reclassify, it's once you start the process, that there's bureaucratic steps. And so, if you do all the roads at once, then it is to do one road one year, one year the next year, because it's so burdensome. Better to have one person just like write all the letters, send them out, certify. And rather than doing this every year, because the hearing processes can be contentious and they can be hard, but having like one hearing for all four of us is much easier. And maybe not maybe not making the decision on all four, but doing the bureaucratic process all at once is much more efficient than having two rows this year, two rows next year. We need to have meetings. And also oh, have to do a viewing. Yeah, I guess there's that's what I meant. There's a site visit and then there's an additional another one. It's pretty I'll make a motion that we start the process of converting uh, Town Highway 47, the two sections of Hoag Road, and the three sections of Mine Road um, to legal trails. I'll second that. Yeah. Number four. Uh, you don't want to I don't know if we need it. I, I plan on doing that separately. I guess okay. we have a formal motion on the floor and a second. Further discussion? For one, two, three. My further discussion would be um, I don't think we should limit it to hydrologically connected sections. If, if we're going to talk about reclassifying highways, I think we should take a careful look at the maps and determine mile points or whatever and do whole sections, not just not just hydrologically connected there, sections. There are ramifications to reducing. Uh, it comes off your highway mileage certificate, right? Only changes. You don't get paid anything for class four anyway. You, you don't, well, you don't get paid anything for class four, but you can only have uh, what percentage? 25% of your roads be class two? Class two, yeah. Class two, right? So getting a class two paving grant. I'm not saying don't reclassify. Well, legal, legal trails count on your mileage too. They do count on your highway mileage. Okay. There's just no financial I didn't think that they actually. I didn't think that they listed them on the sides. Basically, we're moving these they do. roads yeah. to trails. Do you have one? It just means that the state map. State road, yeah. They don't list trails. Yeah, that's what class I thought. Three roads, class, three roads. class four. And, class four. and while we're talking about reclassification, it's been mentioned for a few years that we have a couple of contenders. Oh, there you go. I'm sure. Well, that removed my concern. Point three two miles. Hey, it counts. We just don't know. Uh, throughout the years, there has been mention of Whitcomb Island Road and French Hill being good candidates for class two roads. I'm reiterating with Duncan that careful thought, maybe. Um, we can call the motion. I, I, I'm open. I I'm mean, open you know, maybe this conversation will happen after I'm gone, but like, I'm certainly open to having a broader conversation. The reason I'm pushing these three forward is this is what the planning commission has brought to us, and this is what we can do right now. Number four requires a lot more groundwork, yeah. we'll say, before we can get to that point. Um, 
yeah. the planning commission has been working on this and for a while. That was the other thing that I wanted to say is they had, and I was on the commission at the time. The planning commission was charged with looking at the maps and specifically the hydrologically connected roads for a specific reason. I think we need to, at the very least, honor the work that was done first, and then we can broaden the conversation and talk about other roads. But this has been sitting for far too long. <laughs> yeah. All right. Motion on the floor in a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Aye. And the ayes have it. We want a further motion or do we want to concentrate our work on those three? I don't know if it requires a motion. I guess I'll, I'll make I don't, one just to. I only think it requires a motion because a motion was made. Yeah. I, I, I would like for us to start the process of seeking funding for number four. Um, I don't know if that would require a motion or what, but um, starting to, to see whether something like this would be feasible, whether there are federal or state funds that could help us pay for it. Um, whether the nexus to a recreational resource for the town would help us in any way. Um, I think those are things that need to be explored for number four to be a possibility. Prospect it's right off. I know where it is. Recommendation. Motion to mid May, but also to. Uh, delay the start of the process until after we get the road owner's report at the next meeting. I'm sure it will have its own additional set of roads to do at the same time. Well, and to clarify, I, I did not make a motion on four. I just kind of said, yeah, my my hope. So I guess we can add to the motion at the next meeting. Is that, is that kind of what you're asking? For? Yeah, just so like you know, add to the list. The yeah. Okay, more meetings. So the, the motion as passed was specifically the hydrologically connected sections of those that rooms. the planning commission recommended. Yes, minus <clears throat> prospect rocks one through three. three. It's the entirety of Town Highway, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it's the entirety of Town Highway 47, and it's two sections of Hoag Road and three sections of Mine Road. Yep. What is the number of roads? What's the name for it? Which one? Which one? Town, Town Highway 47? 47? Yeah, it doesn't have a name. None that I know of. It's all French next to uh, property. Okay. I can show you on the map. Further discussion? Why? Yeah. I, I guess my my suggestion would be why not? Why limit it to the hydrologically connected sections? The next time we have a study, they might come up with a different hydrolog hydrologically connected area, um, and then it wouldn't be applicable anymore. So my my concept is there there are class four roads that hoag one to me to me that's a no-brainer do the whole thing as a legal trail you that thing, right? I think that way. what's that, you own that, thing, you that thing. why there's really no difference between a class four and a legal trail in terms of access we, we don't the only maintenance we are required to provide is culverts. I, I asked this question um, of a lister that we had before, Justin. Can you remind me? It wasn't, was it Robin? No, it was Terry. Terry Saban? Yeah. About actual property value and classification of roads and everything. I'll look the email up and send it to you. It doesn't affect property value, in essence. Does it affect what? Title. Why would it? A legal trail is a right of way. Depending on your fourth class ordinance, I'd be worried about the 
uh, how that affected the requirements for permitting and stuff, and went through and sort of changed the problem. Your fourth class road was looking at a problem of being uh, not able to repair, not able to do anything. I think you affected that. So I don't think it's too much different for third, for, you know, the, uh, for between the uh, trail and the fourth class road. The other thing is, I haven't looked at the most updated hydrologically connected map, but it does change all the time. Yeah. We just. That's the Duncan's point. Hydrologically connected is different than changes. Even yeah. while we're inspecting the change. Yeah. Doug? When, when I was on the select board, the. Uh, LCPC had not done all hydrologically connected stuff. Did they ever get back and, and, and update that? Uh, I believe that even no, Jason can update that from his iPad now yeah, as they're yeah. working on it. So Carl said they never finished. They never finished. They had to do, they were doing a, a visual inspection and they didn't complete 100% of the notes. There was that, I think, probably in Paul's PowerPoint. We'll see that some of those maps. We didn't check this here. Yeah, where it's grayed out. Yeah. And there was an explanation with that that said, you know, if there was a gate across the road or something obstructing yeah. access. So we didn't expect a hundred percent of those. The bucket is not point for good changes. We don't really know. I think Jason's input is going to be huge just from a maintenance perspective. If you have a class four road in the section of legal trail and then a class four road, it would make more sense to go class four and then at the start of the first section, legal trail the remaining point out, right? And that's where you put the turnaround for the greater, should there be any events of welcome to greater belly erosion. But I think that having sections in between makes it complicated for maintenance as well. And so I think. Just having Jason's input in the next two weeks or three weeks in the ninth is going to be huge. You know, just to hear that perspective of how to maintain and track and report on. Yeah. I will make an observation here. Sure. Um, the, now I, along with Brian's story, I had uh, requested uh, the Planning Commission to study this uh, quite some time ago when they drafted a letter with a lot of information. <laughs> This is primarily driven by, as you know, the hydrologic, hydrologically connected sections. You know, and, and the but it, it's morphed into into something different. And one of the things you're doing when you're looking at reclassifying roads up is uh, from four class up is you're you're conferring benefits on some section with some people that, that you didn't confer on the people who live uh, up beyond me, more Moreau and people like that. You spent a great deal of time and money. On that, and you and you've taken land and you're moving, you know, presumably the town will pay for it. You're taking town money and giving them great access, uh, and making their land, you know, right, much more valuable, much more insurable, you know, the fire insurance and things like that. So, I think you're losing track of the reason that people were starting down this road, uh, which was hydrologically connected and bankrupt, and you were spending money. That you maybe shouldn't spend, you know, and and, and and treating other people differently and spend a lot of time on and money and effort on their roads. Doug, is this in regards to the the prospect road proposal? Yeah, it's it's in regard. So you currently have a plan. You currently have an ordinance that says that if you want to be a you know if you want to be a third class road, you have to do this, this, and this. You got to you got to come to the select board. It's an onerous process, but you're you're going to change it and say we're going to you just won the lottery on your right away on your driver. You know, one thing that happened the last time I worked at is there was an argument made for percentage of grand less, and that when a section of road exceeded the percentage of grand less, then it was considered to be upgraded at the town. So you know there's feet and pond and the backside had I think 15 percent total grand less or a series of cans. And so the town that was like a justification, and then uh, has that has that has the value of grand list been considered in like prospect rock or can you sit solely on hydrologic connected? No, prospect rock uh, came to came to this because of the hydrologic connected concerns. 
they're not just about that. They have a whole conversation about town asset, it's not on use, which basically impacts people with that now because they run it out and what seats are they can't get on that one. So that was so nice. So I always thought about Cutting Hollow as another place to look into for a period just because of the percentage of houses that are it seems to be growing, right? But that's part of town that there's more and more camps that we put in that are fortunate to now you around drivers. And I just always thought like, you know, what is the reason to, to upgrade and what is the reason to downgrade, right? And there's always several variables. I've always been fascinated by why why the change like that. I you know, I, I'm I'm just pointing out that the change in the system from one to the other is you know will reward some or other others perhaps. I I personally believe that uh, there are good reasons to help the people out on Kai and Hollow. There also there are also good environmental reasons because of the area of the town that that's in not to put a, a highly traveled road through it. Uh, you know, you have two large connected areas of uh, bodies of timber there on the forest land, you know, and that was part of the direction to them uh, to the planning commission. Uh, in, in the original letter, um, I, I don't have a, I don't have a, I don't have anything to do with fight. I would on this. I don't have anything at all. I don't have a stake in it. You know, I I think that we really should look at all these projects and treaty. One thing that I would think of Cotton Hollow and um, that's what I said just real quick. Um, as you as you go into Waterville, where it's primarily an ATV trail, you know, from my hat and sitting at the Rail Trail Commission. Gravel roads are going to be really important for a lot of gravel road bikers there. And if you're thinking about turning that into a trail, it ought to be turned into a trail that's rideable by all bikes if you can manage it somehow, because it will be a great benefit to the community to come to ride there. They're doing it now, and you'll find that it's a it's needed of ATV. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anything further on road reclassification? I just want to say that I would be really uncomfortable to try to evaluate or prioritize road upgrades based on the endless value. Um, there was a really good study down the years ago, and I don't know if it's been updated, but absolutely clearly residential properties were tax losers in terms of what they, they, in other words, they acquired more in services than they paid in taxes. That was before X60. What's that? That was before kids came with money. That was pre-X60, that study. Um, it was, and I, like I said, I don't know if it's been updated to reflect those things or not. Maybe, maybe, it, maybe it would look different, I don't know. Yeah. Um, well, I, I, I guess I'm pretty uncomfortable with the general concept of trying to make decisions on whether we should upgrade roads based on whether they're going to contribute to the tax base or not. Yeah. Okay. Tom, you present on the panel options. So, um, so right now, we, we don't have any good options. Uh, we actually don't have any options, and I think that's probably the most pressing issue. Um, we an offer from Hyde Park, it's like a sublet, um, patient, which did not feel like a good fit. Um, Duncan made some excellent changes there in the package now, suggested changes, and I sent that off to Hyde Park, and that turned out. I've also been in contact with the LCP. And their advice was that we should work directly with an outside panel and not use our ACOs personally uh, unless we had an agreement with uh, COI from her and she's operating as an independent subcontractor that panel and not as an employee of the town. Uh, so our options moving forward are um, working with Hyde Park, which is considerably more than twice as expensive than what we're doing now, plus the additional daily fees. We can try to reach an agreement with the kennel independent of Hyde Park, but I haven't gotten anywhere with that either. Or we have you tried talking to them and they're not into it? I sent an email and I haven't heard back yet. 
Uh, have you sent one with these revisions? Oh, that's when the high yes. Yeah. Yeah. And you haven't heard of that from, no, from or or going around Hyde Park directly to the camera. You haven't heard anything back either. No, and I, I mean it feels a little sneaky to do that as well. But, um, then lastly is the question is, does the select board want me to reach out to our current ACO to see if she'd be willing to get um, insurance, independent insurance on her account at her house? Um, would you consider an annual fee in addition to her ACO duties? Um, does she actually have something right now, Tom, that would meet the bill for impounding you? My understanding she does, and I don't. I don't know that there's a definition of what that is. If she's willing to put it in her house as an independent town. Is that adequate? Or does it have to be, you know, the typical kennel that we imagine? Um, I think the statute talks about proper feed and water. I mean, it's pretty basic stuff. It's, it's, it's yeah. just shelter food and water. Yeah. I don't know. It's not even have to be. So, but she has to have to be an independent contractor with insurance. Exactly. So she, the recommendation would be to you is to reach out to her to get a price. How much would you need annually to insure your kennel as an independent contractor? We pay her annual stipend, similar as what we do to Hyde Park on a smaller scale, and then continue to pay her her ACO duties. Any of the daily, if if she's boarding an animal. Yeah, so good. much, so much per day. Correct. Yeah. Might as well keep the money in the box. I mean, it's also like, even if it comes in higher than high park, it's a great answer to direct us to just say, okay, we're ready. We're moving forward with that. But we have to do something because we have nothing right now. There's a need. I would really like to check out with Crystal to see what her capacity and willingness it is to do something like that because the the proposal we've got from Hyde park is it's five grand just for the privilege of having saying it, that you have a tenant saying we have a kennel and they have a hundred percent authority to deny an animal if they don't have the room to put it so if they deny and if they say you can't Store it here. Where? So, should I allow? We have a sure thing with the other deal. Yeah. Well, we don't know until she agrees. Tom, right, but Tom, that's a better chance. Right. And be yeah. cheaper, too. Presumably. I mean, she's got to get a price on her own insurance. I think that's going to be a hiccup. And, yeah. you know, I don't want to, it's a subcontractor, so you don't want to suggest fees or prices or whatever, but. He's directing her that we would need a certificate of insurance for her own Yeah. That's probably. Are you guys all? Yeah, yeah keep, I like that idea. Keep some money in town. And Sounds like you got the consensus of the board, Tom. Anything further on that? Okay. River gauges. Did anybody read the email from Melissa? Yeah, Menka. Um, that was in the packet. Uh, we I guess. Also talked about that at the, at the yeah, at the, at the flood resiliency meeting. Uh, this is what she was referring to. Um, I, I think it'd be a great resource for data. I don't know how much the town has in our budget to afford it. Um, they were talking about permanent river gauges. This is just an interim temporary solution. They're still working to get more permanent gauges upstream of us. They have, my understanding is they have been, LCPC has been funded to get up to 11 more permanent. I thought they put in for 11. Did they get the funding for they They got the funding, I believe they've got the funding for it. Wow. So I think within the next couple of years, we're probably going to have 11 more yeah. river gauges in Lamoille County. In Lamoille County. Well, nice in, in the water in the watershed. In the watershed. I, I do the believe the wild the wild branch was one. I think so. The Gaihan was one, um, and there's 
Hardwick. Hardwick was going to get one. I think. Um, so no, not Lamoille County, but right. the watershed. Yeah, the but watershed. The watershed. I, which is why. I and I, a couple of negative things about this: uh, it's not publicly available data. Um, she did talk about that. I wasn't entirely sure how we would receive the data, like if it would be just yeah. a site that you log in, but the price tag, well, obviously the board needs to decide if they want to support this in the interim time or if we're not gonna be able to afford it. It's uh, $7,500 for a setup fee and $1,500 for each additional month. So the thought process, if we go this way is, set it up and pay for you know, the hurricane months, if you will. Um, and that just gets us one. Yeah. So if we do two, 18,000, not 9,000 for two months. Our fifth top largest flood on record happened in December. But I think they are They're rapid just to be shared by multiple towns. Multiple yeah. town. So I don't think our cost would be 7,500, it would be whatever other towns are willing to contribute. Yeah. And then the question becomes, where is it gonna be located with five towns chipping in right. and who's gonna make that decision? They have I mean, some thoughts, but I, I don't know I don't the answer. Is there a pallet to, to chip in money? That's the big question. We can ask all the questions if we can afford it. You're the one making the call at the time of the emergency. How is how do you feel about the watershed communication now compared to last year? It's a lot better now. And would this gauge help? No data hurts. Yeah. You know, um, I don't think I don't think to the tune of this much money. And wasn't there some question about? I mean, they call them rapid deployment gauges. They are rapid. But wasn't it wasn't it something like between twenty four and forty eight hours constitutes? Yeah. Rapid deployment, no, forty-eight hours. The floods potentially. Oh my god! Yeah. Well, yeah, you'd have to. That's why you deploy it for a month. You would just have to say, July of next year, we're willing to chip in three thousand. If you could get two other communities to chip in three thousand, you could leave it set up for two months. I don't know. I don't know that we need an answer today. Um, do you have a, a, an opinion? I mean, you are the. Do I have an opinion? Uh, yeah, you're going to make me regret what I'm saying. I, I don't. Unless we get events like last July, I don't know if it's a responsible way to spend taxpayers' money. If we get events like last July, I'll be going, man, I really wish I had this. Um, at the same time, the, the device telling you that it's flooding while well, it's flooding real time. is, uh, you know, it's tough. There's a lot, there's better upstream communication now. So we know when water is coming this way. Um, I would be interested if they could get five communities to do it upstream for two months and we could have something in the Hardwick area um, 9,000 split five ways is what, 1,800 bucks a piece, something like that. Yeah. So it'll be 900 bucks a month, two months. It'll be July and August of next year is when I look at it, and it'll probably be drier than a bone next year. So what, I, I always think of flooding as spring rain. Whenever you say July and August, I always think of spring rains when there's snow back <laughs> and we get rain. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's, there's a lot of times they can flood. <laughs> Historically, yeah. I'm just looking at, you know, data from the right. last two years. Yeah. And we're not, it's not like we have like a monsoon season. That, I mean, we do have a hurricane season, but, you know, it's, it, this yeah. is not a seasonal thing. It's unpredictable. Yeah, yeah. like December. Which is where, where my <laughs> hesitation is time. with this is it's, it, you know, like you said, it's it's gonna just because we're doing it for July and August, it's gonna be bone dry in July and August, and then in September we're gonna get nailed by right, you know. So if installing this makes us not flood, I think we should pay for it every <laughs> month. Yeah. Yeah. Well, look at Lake Champlain; it didn't even freeze on the last winter. I uh, know, you know, and people were sugaring in January. Yeah, it used to be you didn't sugar till after town meeting. Mm -hmm. So uh, to answer your point, 
All right, that's when the runoff was Dallas Beatty. I, I spring. know. And not that long ago, we hired Tatro, I think, to take ice out of the, the river. Nice the nice uh, right. We're going to alleviate, hopefully, when we pull all that gravel out of that corner. Am I imagining something, or did we did we get like a fairly favorable report on the uh, the chance of getting permanent river gauges? It didn't. Yes, uh, it was favorable. I didn't think that it's it was not guaranteed, but I, but I could have been wrong. Well, is that earmark money? Don't it's you? earmark money through Senator Welch's office, and my my recollection is that it's been approved. And when would they be deployed? Well. Uh, When's the money going to come through, and when would they be? Wow. It could be a couple of year process. Yes, I think when we looked at the CBS funding at a select board meeting, they told us two two years, which so anticipate getting that you can do the project right away, reimbursement space, and that reimbursement can come about two years later. Right now, we have a congressional fee freeze, and also, that so not so much change. Okay. I'm not excited about this. Understood. I'm, I brought it here for some answers. Yeah, I would sort of conditionally support it. Like you said, if all of the other com communities were on board and we could split the costs, but it doesn't it doesn't seem like a good use of money that could maybe otherwise be just put in the emergency preparedness fund. And if it's, it's, below, below, pay it all, I'm not if it's below us on the river, I'm not in favor. I, I think you've got a good you know, approach if, if, in order to Come up with that plan though it would seem to me we had have to have specific locations for those to be deployed if you're looking the agreement of if you're looking for more info i can reply and say that there's an appetite if there's multiple community communities and uh and we'd like to know the proposed locations and just bring back more information to the board yeah i'd be happy with that Okay. Are you guys all amenable to that? Okay. Somehow we've gotten ahead of schedule. Uh, we're way behind. All right. Uh, our next item was an addition. It's setting a date for a vicious dog hearing. Um, just so board members know, we need to have it before Wednesday. This week. A potentially vicious. Um, I mean, it's a it's a special meeting, so we would need twenty four hours notice. Correct? Yes. Um, you guys had notice since July. Okay, this has been going on since April. The first thing through the Loyal County Sheriff's Department. I've been, my first complaint has been since May 6th. I've sent in three videos, and the last video that I sent clearly shows the dog is attacking my dogs through the fence. I know as some think that this is a joke, as they carry stated the dogs haven't done anything, but if you look at, look at your article two, and their potentially vicious dog, it, it states, threatens to attack. Now you watch that video, that dog is viciously attacking, trying to attack my dogs through my fence. And if I didn't yell, the dog wouldn't have took it off. I'm just saying like, okay, this is the second time, time the dog has tried to get over my fence. How long before, you know, I have a 5.7 pound dog for one, two 10 pounds and a 13 pound. Why does one of my dog has to get seriously killed or injured before something is done? Are you Kim? I am. Okay. Um, and I'm fairly I would, upset about this. I totally understand. Um, at this hearing that we're trying to schedule now is when all of that would be entered. And we would enter into deliberation um, and provide a, an opinion. Um, so we're trying to schedule that, and I am sorry. Um, you did reference Title Two, and I believe it's Title Ten that that says what what a vicious dog complaint is, and you did file it on Wednesday. I'm recognizing that we have seven days from Wednesday to schedule it. Right, but my first initial report was July 9th that supposedly got thrown out because I didn't include my address. 
I just put St. John's Street. I'm sorry about that. Um, so, um, there's a lot of this with like a miscommunication and perhaps misunderstanding that I think the first time I called you on the phone last week mm -hmm. and just said, hey, you know, this is what the next steps are. And, you know, everyone's trying to help. And this is the next step to help you. It's this hearing and it's formal. And we're going to hear what you have to say. And nobody's saying it doesn't matter. And nobody's saying they don't care. They're actually saying we want to help. And, uh, so we just need to establish that hearing so we can make the next step. Well, the Dean's the one that pointed me in this direction. So last time I spoke with him about this last issue, he agrees that the dog is vicious, that something needs to be done. Dean should be at the hearing as well to prevent to present evidence at the hearing. And multiple requests to the ACOs to provide that. We don't need it in an email, we need it provided at the hearing. Yeah, he should be there in person and testify. And, and I would just say that make sure you also bring all the videos because while we do have them in our email, it's important that it is entered into the record at that hearing so that it can be included in the findings of that. Yeah, I have them on my phone. Okay. And just so you guys know, like since my the last initial report attack, um, they've been gone for like a month. They just got back like a week, week and a half ago. So that's why there hasn't been any. You know, there's been like a month. The, the owners? Yeah. Okay. But they're here now? They are here now. But Dean has, they don't ever answer when Dean goes there. And when the, the Lamoille County Sheriff's Department first got involved in this way back in April, they weren't licensed, they weren't rabies, they are now. So there's like two violations right there. Um, Running the large is the next one, and then threatening to attack is the next one. Will the dog owners be invited to this meeting also? I believe that there should be every attempt made to uh, get both parties here to provide testimony. Yeah, and if they're not if they're not answering the phone or responding to being then we should probably have legal service filed. Meaning having the sheriff's department deliver seventy-five dollars. Yeah. yeah. Let's make sure. And even then they may not answer the door. But we will have at least have uh, tried. Try to do okay service. And, and I love dogs. All animals, and I would hate to see this dog get put down. But obviously, the numerous times that Dean has tried to get in contact or whatever in the sheriff department, that these people can't <clears throat> handle a potentially vicious animal. Uh, like, well, that, that's getting the, out, like I don't know. again, again, this will all be in testimony. Um, I do believe in our ordinance. That we are not allowed to terminate a dog that is a potentially vicious dog. I thought I read that you could. I'll I'll send it to you. I have it. it it's specifically in uh, oh, our last list. sentence of section eleven. Yeah, it says it's, you it's could do all the remedies written. except yep. humane destruction. Yep. And like I said, I don't want that. I just think like if we can up the dog and put it, find it a new home. Where someone can give it the time and safety for everyone. Um, so all of this will come up in the hearing. Uh, okay. I believe the day that makes most sense is Wednesday um, because we need to notice for 24 hours so we can meet at nine o'clock tomorrow night, or we could meet at Wednesday anytime. What are the board's thoughts? I can't do tomorrow. Not even at 9 p.m. Why do we want to do it at 9 p.m. Wednesday? That's why I was saying Wednesday makes the most sense. Yeah, yeah. Um, I can't do Wednesday. I can do Wednesday. 
I don't want to meet at nine o'clock tomorrow. Worse, <laughs> worse, worse you good with it? I can't you make it. Meet, yeah, then we, we adjourn to a specific time and place. Can you warn a meeting tomorrow, Tom? Or uh, what time do you guys want to shoot for on Wednesday? Five thirty. Is there a time early in the morning? Zoom or yeah, I could do 5 a.m. <laughs> I, 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 I could do, I could Zoom do four earlier. earlier. I could do four. I I don't want to be on this via Zoom. Uh, but I can you want to do four? I can probably make that work. Four four does not work any better for me to be on Zoom because I'm gonna have to be driving at that point. We, we were joking, so oh, yeah. No, you wanted to. Oh, I thought. I was thinking I don't 4 p.m. Okay. I was thinking 4 p.m. Okay. I thought you were saying 4 p.m. Make, well, make you were saying 5 a.m. I was. I was saying 4 a.m. You said 5 a.m. and I said 4. Okay, where are we meeting and when? We're meeting here? Are there any conflicts? Say, is there any time that does work? If it was earlier in the day, I could zoom in from work. But, uh, you know, at, at 4, I'm going to be driving and I'm busy that night until around 7. So, are you going to be available? Me? Yeah. Uh, we could give you a recording, I think. Right? I mean, I, I would come up this Wednesday. Oh, no, wait, is that the third Wednesday of the month? That's when the yeah, Wednesday the committee meets. And I believe if we record the meeting, Shane can listen to the recording and participate in the decision. Yep. <clears throat> Which have they made in deliberations? You don't think you make a decision that night. What's that? You're not going to make a decision that night. I uh, assume we probably would. Likely. But. Uh, but. How many is we can, them anyway? Yeah, yeah. three. What time? Six p.m. Wednesday. Wednesday. Municipal building. Day after tomorrow. Yep. Yeah, I was gathering that with Donna. We can go downstairs. Thank you, I probably won't be a heavily attended one. Yeah. So the 21st at 6 p.m. And Tom, tomorrow you're going to make every possible effort to get a hold of the dog owner, um, notify the com the Put it online, put it on the board, and then get the chair to provide service tomorrow. And or, get with ACO for testimony. And Kim, I guess you wrote that down Wednesday. Wednesday Six at five. six. Here. Yes. Downstairs. Okay. All right. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Tom, buyout application. Uh, awkwardly. Boy, that they took a long time. I guess they 43 did. Railroad Street. What are the board's wishes? Motion to approve. Okay. Second. Motion to second. Further discussion? Please send that to Scott. Aye. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? The ayes have it. Tom, rec coordinator. Uh, we have two resumes in response. Uh, would the board like to schedule interviews or continue or make a further push on that? What are the board's wishes? I say we interview. You want to interview both candidates as the board? Yeah. Do, can you forward their uh, pertinent information to everybody? Absolutely. Uh, so that means we're going to need to set a date. Luckily, I'm looking to set another date anyways for a select board meeting. I'd like to have a select board meeting. Uh, it could be a shorter one to go over uh, the information for the industrial park prior to the informational meeting. Board members' thoughts. It also ties into one of your additional items, Duncan. What's that? The delegation of the industrial park bond No, I mean, there could be that. Delegate it. We'll do that one. 
So I, I would make a motion to delegate the authority to prepare a bond vote information sheet to Evan Patch as chair and to have him circulate it as soon as we get it ready for publication. Are we going to um, all second? Motion to second for the discussion. Are we going to uh, see it before you approve it, Evan, or are we peaceful? This is where they all tie together. I'd like to have another meeting before the informational meeting. Uh, when can we do that? It could be a shorter meeting. The uh, informational meeting is the ninth. On the ninth, which is right after the hearing on the plan right before our select board meeting. Ninth book, pretty heavy. Um, the first is uh, holiday. So what do we think about the second? The second is the holiday. Is it? Second is Labor Day. Second oh, is Labor Day. Bummer. What about the third? Yeah, you're right. The second is Labor Day. Sometime in that week, third, fourth, fifth, or sixth. Second works better. I mean, third works better for me. Mike, are you relatively open? Whatever. Whatever. Donna, are you available on the third? We could do it from recordings, maybe. Yeah, the third, the uh, Cambridge. September 3rd. Is everybody good with September 3rd? Uh, this is where it's all tying together. Uh, <laughs> you keep saying that. 6 30? Okay. You good with that, Tom? You got that down? My life is going by too fast. So all right. This is After. A special meeting? This is just to go over the industrial park okay. information. Yeah. Wow, I didn't know we did that. You so do. we can call that a pre-informational meeting. Just go along with the board. Yeah, I mean it's it's a special select board meeting where we're going to yeah. talk about That's the information that we'll have, and we'll be on the same page. Following that, do we want to do rec interviews? Yes, that would work. We're going to be there. It's anyway. all coming together now. You, I think you were there the whole time. You're just picking on me for what I was saying. Yeah. Um. So. Tom, that agenda will be uh, industrial park informational planning. Thirty minutes. We're meeting it. And do we give each rec cordon six thirty rec candidate about thirty yeah, for an interview? And you can send the the resumes tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Have you seen these resumes? I will tomorrow. Okay. There's there's only three more items. Uh, the trustees. I I, I spoke with Ken, and they were going to look into fuel paint, uh, propane costs, and they're wondering if we could have Tom looking at fuel costs. It's all relatively simple because everybody's going to select the lowest bidder. Um, so I don't know if we need a formal motion tonight, but could we just? Give wishes to Tom to get prices on fuel and come back to us, and, or work with Eric, or we could delegate Duncan to select. I would fuel propose supplier. to have Tom uh, <clears throat> investigate fuel prices on behalf of the town, and that we would accept the same for Eric to do propane prices uh, for the village. All right, that's a motion. Yes. All right, is there a second. second? Motion, and second. Further discussion. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed. The ayes have it. Um, on town and village things that just came to my mind, did we ever get a response from them on the website whether they were interested in uh, yeah. splitting the costs? They wanted to see prices first. Okay. Yeah, okay, I remember. To be determined. All right, now we have two executive sessions. I would entertain a motion to enter into executive session. Before we go there, can I just ask a quick question relative to 
So I sent out the draft document. But she got a really good response from Eric with some suggested yeah. modifications, changes. Are people generally okay with the idea? And if not, would you please send any comments or suggestions to either myself or Evan? Except for you, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> So I've served with Mark for how many years? It'll be two years. Well, I've, or I'll be three years with you. Three years in March. Yeah. I think you've only replied to like five emails. Yeah. He's he's on top of it. He's read five emails. So in answer, to your question, I think, your question, I think yes, I, he read I think we should try and today. send out a version immediately before circulating and say, "Is everybody, as you said, peaceful?" Right. Yep. You can all yell at me if you're not. <clears throat> Doug? Um, the moving of the of your select board meeting to the ninth, um, we Randall advised us that our, our real the grants that we're planning to submit on the rail trail have to be a have to have a deadline of the tenth. We are talking about them Wednesday. We would come in at that meeting and we would hope to be on your agenda and hope to get approved. We have uh, $20,000 or so from the Community Foundation We have in hand. We have uh, Eddie Gale has given us the remainder of uh, us being the town $4,100. And some of that money can be used as a match for another grant that we will, will be wanting to submit. But you know that's all going to be discussed at our meeting on Wednesday. And so we're planning to come in you know, and now we have just a day ahead of time. So we have to be on your agenda for the ninth so that we can turn it around and get the application in the tenth for this grant that's coming due. Jeff Starr's next to that one. one. Does it doesn't sound like we'll reject your your desires. So well I'm I'm aware of who wears the pants here. It isn't us. All right, thank you. Well, it's thank important you. to get it on the agenda. Oh yeah, I, I wanted your attention. Yes, thank you. Come to the meeting. If it misses the agenda, we'll add it at the beginning. <laughs> okay. Now I would entertain a motion to enter the executive session. Uh, for confidential attorney communications for the purpose of providing professional legal services to the body, he has a, I stripped about all over it. 315A1F. Second. Motion and a second. Further discussion? Can we, can we do two executive session motions? Go into one big executive session and do, do the two items, or do you think we should come back? Out? Are they connected we can come out probably cleaner that way okay all recording stopped all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. aye all those opposed the ayes have it we're entering executive session at 9 16. are we keeping